Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are here. Your word is power. Your word is relevant, Lord God. We ask your blessing upon it in your mighty name. Amen. Well, praise God. How many of you here have ever met an impossible situation? Something that you thought you just couldn't find an answer to. Something that seemed overwhelming to you that you couldn't get an answer to. And you kind of just felt that there was no answer to this, no remedy. There are times in our lives that we have these things that come up and we think they're never going to change. It's always going to be the same old thing. We're going to go around and around. But I'm here to tell you today there's a solution. His name is Jesus. And he wants to do something powerful through us and in us and for us. Praise God. He is the God of the impossible. And he showed up and showed out for the people of Israel in a big way, a mighty way. And we're going to look at some of those ways and some of the things that he did for them. I want to go to scripture in Exodus chapter 16, verse 2. Exodus 16, verse 2. This is some scripture to build up to something I'm going to talk about. 16, verse 2. This is the people of Israel. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. This is the children of Israel. They're talking uh, to Moses and they're complaining because they're having it rough. They're kind of hungry at this point and so they're grumbling. And also chapter 17, verse 1. 17.1 17.1 says, The whole Israelite community sat out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses, and they said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Okay, so they're complaining and grumbling and and just having a, a stinking thinking time again. Now, you stop and you think about what the Lord had done for them prior to this. What did the Lord do for them prior to this? brought him through the Red Sea. So he was with them, and they knew this, right? So should they have been complaining? No, but it's easy to do when you're thirsty or when you're hungry to complain. So they didn't think about the mighty God that had brought them out of the bondage of Egypt and out of the hard labor. All they were thinking about, right now, I want something to eat. I want something to drink. But God was still with them, but the people of Israel were cyclic. They were cyclic. They would praise God. They would worship God. They would serve God, and God would bless them. And then they would get into a rut, and they would forsake God, and they would worship idols, and and God's made of wood and stone, and then God's blessing would lift. And he would allow them to be overtaken by um, enemies, And so then they would come back to their senses, and then they would serve God again. So in chapter 19, verse 3, okay, oh, I hear the flipping of Bibles. I like that. Matthew 19, verse 3 says, Then Moses went up to God 
And the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations you will be my treasured possession. So God gives them a great promise right there. They would be his treasured possession. He would take care of them and love them and watch over them and shield them. They had a good promise from God right there. All they had to do was worship God and obey him, put him first, make him Lord of their life. Amen. <clears throat> so he said, you've seen what I did to Egypt and I bore you on eagle's wings. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. So just follow God fully and be blessed. I want to look at uh, something else here in the scriptures. And this is a guy, a fella, who was one of the judges of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, we want to talk about the impossible situations. So this guy, his name was Gideon. So we're going to go to the book of Judges. Chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to be reading a lot of scripture today. I hope you're not hungry, at least for food, because you're going to get some spiritual food today. Praise God. So here we have <clears throat> Judges, chapter 6, verse 1. Again the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. They camped on the land and ruined the crops all the way to Gaza and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep nor cattle nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock in their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count the men and their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Midian was so impoverished, the Israelites had so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says, I brought you up out of Egypt and out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them from before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. Okay, praise the Lord. You have not listened to me. Verse 11, the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Aphra, that belonged to Joash the Abzerite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you, mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian. Wow. So it looked like an impossible situation to Gideon. I mean, it says here prior to this that they were like swarms of locusts. There was a lot of them, a lot of enemies against them. And they were basically systematically starving them to death. And the people were hungry. They needed help. And here's that situation again. They called out to the Lord their God. Lord, we need help. Lord, we confess. We've sinned. They came back to God again. So God heard their prayer. God heard their prayers. Praise the Lord. And so 
Gideon is hiding in a wine press trying to thresh some wheat so he can get some food. And does it look like it's a possibility that Israel's going to be freed at this point? No, not really. Doesn't look like a possibility. But we know that we serve the God of the impossible. Amen? Amen. That's right. Praise the Lord. We serve the God of the impossible. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So anyway, Gideon had said uh, there were the things that, um, where are all these miracles that God did before? You know, what, did, what are some things that God did? He gave them shoes that didn't wear out. He gave them manna to eat. He gave them meat to eat. He took care of them. Miracles. And this is what Gideon's saying. Where is all that? Well, God is up to something big. Praise God. God is up to something big. He's going to move. Hallelujah. Now, let's go to uh, 6. I want to look at this. Um, Verse 14, the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? But Lord, Gideon asked, How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you. Praise God. I will be with you. And you will strike down all the Midianites together. Gideon replied, Now, if I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. Gideon went in, prepared a young goat, and from an ephah of flour, he made bread without yeast, putting the meat in a basket and its broth in a pot. He brought them out and offered them to him under the oak. The angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened bread and place them on this rock and pour out the broth. And Gideon did so. With the tip of the staff that was in his hand, the angel of the Lord touched the meat and the unleavened bread. Fire flared up from the rock, consuming the meat and the bread, and the angel of the Lord disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was an angel of the Lord, he explained, Ah, sovereign Lord, I've seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said to him, Peace, do not be afraid. You're not going to die. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it the Lord is peace. To this day it stands in Aphra of the Abzerites. Praise God. That same night the Lord said to him, Take a second bull from your father's herd and one seven years old, Tear down your father's altar to Baal and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. Then build a proper kind of altar to the Lord your God on the top of its height. Using the wood of the Asherah pole that you cut down, offer the second bull as a burnt offering. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord told him. But because he was afraid of his family and the men of the town, he did it at night rather than in the daytime. In the morning when the men of the town got up, there was Baal's altar demolished with the Asherah pole beside it cut down and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They asked each other, who did this? When they carefully investigated, they were told Gideon, son of Joash, did it. Praise God. Gideon showed some sand there, didn't he? He uh, did what God told him to do. And if you look at this whole account, God said, Gideon did. God said, do this. Gideon did it. Gideon is listening very carefully for the voice of the Lord, and he's obeying the voice of the Lord. He's doing what God said. So Gideon is going out, and as he does what God says, God is going to bless his life. God is going to empower him and use him to do what God wants him to do. Praise the Lord. The men of the town demanded of Joash, bring out your son, he must die because he's broken down Baal's altar and cut down the Asherah pole beside it. But Joash replied to the hostile crowd around him, Are you going to plead Baal's cause? Are you trying to save him? Whoever fights for him shall be put to death by morning. 
If Baal is really a god, he can defend himself when someone breaks down his altar. So that day they called Gideon Zerubbabel, saying, let Baal contend with him because he broke down Baal's altar. Praise God. So the Lord will contend with those that contend with us. The Lord will fight for us or fight for those who, who fight against us. The Lord will work on our behalf as we seek God to follow him, to put him first. God's going to work on our behalf and fight for us. Do you believe it? Yes, I do too. Praise God. I believe that God is with us, does not leave us or forsake us. Praise God. So God gives Gideon this huge undertaking. He asks God for a sign about it to make sure that this is what God wanted him to do. Now, God had called Gideon a mighty man of valor. Was Gideon really a mighty man of valor? Yes, he was. God called him a mighty man of valor. He's a mighty man of valor. God calls all things that are not as though that they were. Praise God. He is the God of the impossible. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> so he wants him to go out and to save his people, Israel. Praise the Lord. Now we're going to go to um, Psalms 97.5. The mountains <clears throat> melt like wax before the Lord. This is the kind of God that we serve. I mean, we, we talk about God, we pray to God, we think about God. But do we really, really think about the awesomeness of God and the power that our God has? Wow. I mean, stop and think about what God has done in your life and in the past and will do again. If God said he's going to do miracles, then he's going to do miracles. If he raised the dead then, he will raise the dead now. If he healed the sick then, he will do it now. He is the God of the impossible. So when we pray to God, we can believe that he's faithful and he's going to do what he said he's going to do and what we're praying about. He will answer our prayers. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Psalm 97, 1, what does that say? The Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. The Lord reigns. Praise God. I like that. The Lord reigns. Hallelujah. Evil might have a something going on, but God reigns, God shines, God's going forward, God is moving, God is full of all power and might and dominion. So when we come, we can know that he's going to answer. God's right there, ready to move on our behalf. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's look at Job chapter 38. 3 through 7. Job. Job 38, <clears throat> 3 through 7. This is God talking to Job. He says, brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. <clears throat> Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? Or where were its footings set? <clears throat> or who laid its cornerstones? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels 
shouted for joy. Praise God. This is the kind of God that we serve. He is the creator, the all-powerful God. And Job had just there, as you know, gone through a, a horrible trial in his life. But God is saying to Job, this is the things that I did. Now tell me if you can answer me. Where were you when all this happened? In our lives, it seems like sometimes there are impossible situations we just can't get through. Seems like something's never going to change. We've prayed about it forever. And oh my goodness, it just seems like that time goes on and on and you begin to wonder, is God ever going to answer? Yes, God's going to answer. It's going to happen in God's time. God's going to do something. God just does not take a sleeping pill and go for a snooze. He's on the job 24 hours a day, seven days a week. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, the Spirit of the Lord, chapter 7 of, of Judges. Let's go back to there. Judges. Chapter 7, early in the morning, Zerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all his men camped at the spring of Herod. The camp of Midian was north of them in the valley near the hill of Morah. The Lord said to Gideon, you have too many men for me to deliver Midian into their hands in order that Israel may not boast against me that their own strength has saved her. Announce now to the people, anyone who trembles with fear may turn back and leave Mount Gilead. So 22,000 men left, while 10,000 remained. But the Lord said to Gideon, there are still too many men. Now remember, the people of Midian were like locusts. There were so many of them, like a massive swarm of locusts. <clears throat> But the Lord said to Gideon, there's still too many men. Take them down to the water, and I will sift them for you there. If I say this one shall go with you, he shall go. But if I say this one shall not go with you, he shall not go. So Gideon took the men down to the water. There the Lord told him, separate those who lap the water with their tongues like a dog from those who kneel down to drink. Three hundred men lapped with their hands to their mouths. All the rest got down on their knees to drink. The Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men that lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hands. Let all the other men go, each to his own place. So Gideon sent the rest of the Israelites to their tents, but kept the 300 who took over the provisions and trumpets of the others. Okay, so God is pared down from thousands to a mere hundreds. That's quite a drop in a number of people that are able to fight. So God wants it to be known that he is to receive the glory for that, not the people of Israel. God wants them to know that it was the Lord's mighty hand that brought them through that trial and that time. <clears throat> All right, praise the Lord. <clears throat> Now, the camp of Midian, this is um, verse 8. The camp of Midian lay below him in the valley. During the night, the Lord said to Gideon, Get up and go down against the camp, because I am going to give it unto your hands. If you're afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Afterwards, you will be encouraged to attack the camp. So he and Pura, his servant, went down to the outpost of the camp. The Midianites, the Amalekites, and the other eastern peoples had settled in the valley thick as locusts. Their camels could no more be counted than the sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just as a man was telling a friend his dream. I had a dream, he was saying. A round loaf of barley came tumbling into the Midianite camp, and it struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. His friend rep responded, This can be nothing other than the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God has given the Midianites and the whole camp into his hands. When Gideon heard the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped God. 
He returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up! The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord has given the Midianite camp into your hands. Hallelujah. The Lord has given you the Midianite camp. Praise God. You now, today, have that power within you. Because if you have God in your spirit and in your heart and in your mind and in your thoughts, it's the same God today that it was then. And you can move out in the power of the Lord and in the power of his might and in his strength. As you seek God first, as you put him first, he will use you mightily. As you look to God as the author and the finisher, he's going to use you. Do you believe God's going to use you in some way? Praise the Lord. He's going to use you to speak to other people. Jesus Christ is Lord. He's going to use you to pray for the sick. And what does the Bible say? They will recover. Expect answers. Expect God to move on your behalf. Expect God to do great and mighty things. He's able. And hallelujah, he's willing. He wants to do these things. Have faith in the God you believe in. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we're just getting started here. <clears throat> All right, so Gideon's now got this, ooh, the strength from the Lord, and he's going to go out, and he's going to do what God's going to give him, this mission. God's given him a mission. He's going to do it. And I praise God. Uh, verse 17 says, Watch me, he told them. Follow my lead. When I get to the edge of the camp, do exactly as I do. When I and all who are with you, with me, Blow our trumpets, then from all around the camp will blow yours and shout for the Lord and for Gideon. Notice right there, Gideon says, for the Lord and for Gideon. Puts God first, right at the very beginning. God and the hundred men with him reached the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch. Just after they had changed their guard, they blew their trumpets and broke the jars that were in their hands. The three companies blew the trumpets and smashed the jars grasping the torches in their left hands and holding in their right hands the trumpets they were to blow. They shouted, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. While each man held his position around the camp, all the Midianites ran, crying out as they fled. When the 300 trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled to Bethsheba towards Zerah as far as the border of Abel, Maloah, near Tabith. Praise God. So they went there at night, and all the Midianites were bedded down for the night, resting. And they were all settled in for the night. And he went there on three sides, and it was dark, but they had torches. And the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. And they broke the torches and were shouting. Imagine you wake up out of a stupor and you see all these lights and, and hear all these loud voices. Would you think that there's an army surrounding you, maybe? They couldn't tell that there was just 300 piddling men. They couldn't see that. But God knew what he was doing. Those people fled. They were scared and confused and just half awake, half asleep, but God worked a miracle because Gideon was faithful to do what God asked him to do. He went out in the power of the Lord, not in his might, but in the power of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And we could do that, too. We can go out in the power of the Lord, and through his strength, we can set people free. We can pray for sick people, and they will recover. We can see miracles today. God's still doing miracles today, and he can do them in your life. When we come together, have faith and believe God's going to do is there something that you're seeking God for that maybe seems like an impossible situation? Is there something maybe that you 
you need God to move in your life for, a situation that you maybe have been praying about a long time, just haven't seen an answer, God's still there to move. If you want, the altars are open. You can come to the altar and pray, and we can pray together if there's a situation that maybe you need prayer for. Well, let's pray here. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word and for your goodness to us. Lord, thank you, God, that you are here to meet our needs. And Lord, we just pray that you'd bless everybody here, that they would take home your word and your spirit and go forth in the name of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.